Okay, so welcome back. This is video number seven. We're going to talk about the survey form. So what we're trying to figure out is how long your survey form should be. And in that thought process, it really depends on your buyer and their attention span. So I can't really say you have to ask them five questions or 10 questions or 20 questions. It really depends on your prospect and their essentially their patience level. So in order to do that, you have to get an idea of their typical day. So that's why we did the exercise previously. So if you skip that, you're really not going to know how much time they have during the typical day. Now, if you go back and do that typical day exercise, it's going to reveal to you some things and that will give you a better idea of, okay, their day is really, really busy. They're not going to sit down and take a 20 question survey, but they will definitely sit down and take a five or even 10 question survey. So like I said, I can't give you an exact number, that is going to be required for every single person. It really depends. And you can arrive at a better educated guess by doing that exercise. So in other words, by understanding your buyer and how willing they are to go through your whole service, that is when you will know. So obviously you don't want to make it too long, but you want to ask the right amount of questions. Now, in terms of what survey web application you should use, we recommended surveymonkey.com and wufu.com. And the reason why we don't recommend every single survey form builder or quiz builder or anything out there is simply because for this to really work, you're going to need to have an option that will allow you to redirect people to different locations based on the questions that they answer. So going back to the father, the single woman and the elderly couple. So we have three different choices. If they choose that this is my age, we're retired, whatever, you're not going to want to send them to the exact same location, right? Otherwise that defeats the whole purpose of a survey funnel and customizing that experience to them. That's why not every single form builder or quiz builder is going to work. Now, what these are called are conditional rules. If a person says, yes, I'm an elderly couple, then send them here. If they say that they are a father of a family, send them here if then. So you need the conditional rules and the form builder needs to be complex enough to offer those as options. So going back to the security example, if the father is taking the survey and checks that, yes, we want to redirect them to a specific location. And this will allow you to direct them to a different video sales letter or even a different email autoresponder system. So in turn, you can customize the experience that they have your email series to that specific person and their needs. So hopefully this makes sense. If you're wondering how to implement this, don't worry. We're going to talk about that in the upcoming videos. What well, we definitely recommend woofoo.com or surveymonkey.com. Woofoo.com, I believe it's a little bit cheaper. You can start out with the basics, but just make sure that the plan that you choose has those conditional rules. Now, if you want to start out with the cheapest plan first, and then as you discover those different buyers, then you can switch up. So whatever works for you, go ahead and do that now. So now that we've covered that, it's very, very crucial to map out your survey funnel. In other words, what will it look like? And that's what we're going to do in the next video.